This is a, a great opportunity to see one of the kind of mythical sites of Scottish archaeology. The, the Cochno Stone is one of these sites that people have heard about, there's rumours about it, but very few people remember seeing it when, before it was buried, and so to be part of the revealing of it is really exciting. The Cochno Stone is a large ancient rock located at West Dunbartonshire, Scotland. Measuring 42 feet by 26 feet, it was first discovered in 1887 by the Reverend James Harvey. Such a large stone, once sitting proud upon the surface, inevitably attracted people's attention for thousands of years. The stone features around 90 carved ancient images, considered to be one of the finest sets of ancient petroglyphs in the world. It was reburied in 1965 by archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann, who decided to bury the massive slab under several feet of soil to protect it from damage and to prevent people from adding their own modern carvings to it. In 2015, it was partially re-exposed for investigation during a three-day dig and a more complete re-exposure followed a year later. So far, archaeologists cannot agree on what is exactly depicted on the massive slab, yet the images are clearly strange. Often when you discover that specialists cannot come to a joint conclusion, the subject is of a controversial nature. There is no consensus among archaeologists on the meaning of the intricate symbols found on its surface. Experts plan to digitally map the stone, and that data obtained could shine more light on its history. Its purpose and the people who created the artwork, they believed, lived more than 5,000 years ago. Dr. Kenny Brophy led the excavation and described the experience of seeing the stone as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because of the array of markings on it, the Cockney Stone has been recognized as being of national importance and designated as a scheduled monument. Due to its unusual illustrations and the choice in shapes and placement thereof, many researchers have come to the conclusion that the Cockno Rock could have been some form of star map. The mystery of its strange decorations will undoubtedly persist for many years to come. Although school curriculums, historical publishings, permitted TV documentaries, and even national museums all conform to a dreary, limited historical tale in which modern archaeology dictates all. We feel evidence to suggest that a lost civilization once lived, flourished, and built incredible as yet unexplained structures all over our planet is now overwhelming. We have endeavored to explore, unravel, and describe to the world this unimaginably enormous array of impressive, incredibly ancient feats of stone building. By doing so, we feel we have demonstrated that not only is academia severely lacking any explanation or even permitted study of these features, but that this lost civilization, before their mysterious disappearance, were clearly far in advance of our own current architectural, agricultural, and even technological knowledge. And while the world has begun to awaken to the reality of this group's past existence, we have been busy attempting to uncover just what they were building, who they could have been, and why they were clearly infatuated with the stars. It should be clear to anyone who has explored these unexplained ancient structures that a common reoccurrence among all is the inclusion of constellations, whether that be within the alignment of said builds, or indeed etched into the architecture itself. Why would a clearly highly advanced past civilization have been so obsessed with the stars? If one ponders this question, without the clouded primitive belief-based explanations and motives academia puts forward, it is a question that becomes highly compelling. In Kiori Concha, Cusco, the golden star disk once rested, once part of a large star map, although funded scholars have seemingly been unable to describe its obvious depictions, many individual researchers have conveniently deciphered this disk with ease. The golden star map, according to an Incan elder, is a map of the sky where their ancestors and Viracocha came from. It has been investigated by academics for over the last 70 years, although this research bared little fruit. Its detail was masterfully produced on one enormous hammered gold sheet, 
and is believed to have been a mere piece of a map once far larger. How did this ancient people know so much about the stars and the universe around us? Why were they so obsessed with stars? Were the Incas visited by beings from space? Perhaps one day we will find out. There are some extremely interesting anomalies which can be found on Earth, the most impressive of which undoubtedly found upon the Giza Plateau. Particularly regarding the alignment of the Great Sphinx and the dating this can give us for its possible construction, pertaining to a past alignment with the star constellations Leo, some researchers have concluded that the Sphinx was built over two processions prior to its current date, over 10,000 years ago a conclusion that has predictably been denied as possibly being accurate by certain bodies of study. However, compelling ancient ruins, pointing to a date of construction far back to this 10,000 plus time period, can in fact be found on an entirely different continent. Discovered carved into the roof of an ancient tomb within Japan, this amazing engraving is actually a star chart. However, due to the claimed age of the tomb, it has been dated to a far more recent time within history than the evidence within the map is illustrating. The roof of the tomb is unusual. Instead of the usual religious illustrations, the ceiling depicted this enigmatic celestial map, complete with 68 constellations painted in gold and three concentric circles drawn in vermilion, these displaying the movement of all our system's celestial objects. Funded researchers claim that the ancient star chart was drawn around 65 BC, with the tomb said to have housed the remains of an official or prince of the region. And although academia believes that the star map was made using observations of the celestial heavens, the research which has been done to unravel the map has revealed some startling controversial implications. The star map is actually extremely ancient, depicting alignments over 10 millennia older than the date claimed. The obvious question would be, who could have created a map of the heavens so early in history? Why would they want to do so? If they were, like academia states, not actually observing this constellation in real time, and didn't actually create it as a logical form of dating their own tomb, then why draw such a chart? We personally suspect that this star chart is an upart, masquerading as an explained away anomaly. Yet regardless of academic claims regarding the Dunhuang star chart, it is undoubtedly a remarkable item of interest. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts, and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies, but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others' work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations, many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence, who not only share my view that much of the history currently being taught to future generations is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, 
I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious lair, a brief prologue is as follows. Quote, Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a lair which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers. End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet, due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence. I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history, they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907, although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua Manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, there are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past vastly more advanced civilization, copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas, meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection, yet this piece in itself is an exact, accurate plotting of polar constellations, and due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered, copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907, one of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel 
their lack of public exposure, and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work, is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars. Not only proving that, although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presumed the world was flat, they somehow assumed that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure, as highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.